This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 973. The Problem with So-Called Health Habits, part one, by J.C. Dean, jcdfitness.com, and I'm your narrator, Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy middle of the week Wednesday, and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. Now, we have five shows where we do this, Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find all of them. Now, today's post is a bit longer than what I typically narrate, so I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. And I know it's the middle of the week, and with all of this coronavirus stuff going on, we probably need a little inspiration. So, here we go. Quote, Average people can become great through great behaviors performed consistently. Kyle Dunnigan. And with that, now that we're in the right frame of mind, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. The Problem with So-Called Health Habits, Part 1, by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. Health Habits. We all need them. Every online tabloid wants to give you a list of essential health habits, which, if you could only implement them, would change your life. You've seen those long lists of platitudes like, don't do drugs, drink more water, eat one healthy meal, complete a physical challenge, eat a meal replacement bar, seriously, wear sunscreen every day, be grateful, avoid sugar, eat clean, sweat once a day. But this article won't be anything like those. Instead of giving you a list of ideas to implement that might be good for you, I wanna help you understand why blanket health habits are not always the best for you, depending on your individual needs. I wanna teach you about habits, how we form them, why bad habits are easy to fall back into, and why your health habits might look different than someone else's, and why that's okay. The definition of a habit. Habits are automatic processes, typically something we consider a practice or routine, and it's hard to give up. So think of something like brushing your teeth or smoking. We're taught to brush our teeth in the morning upon waking and at night before going to bed. This keeps your teeth and gums healthy. Smokers have a habit of lighting up at certain periods throughout the day. Mounds of evidence have shown that smoking is a harmful habit. Drinking coffee, having breakfast, how you tie your shoes, and your morning commute are all examples of daily habits. They're so ingrained in us that we often do them without much thought. In his book, The Power of Habit, Charles Duhigg estimates that more than 40% of your daily actions are not conscious decisions, but rather unconscious habits. So almost half of your daily actions are probably automatic, so much so you wouldn't even be aware of them until you decide to be. Are your daily habits healthy? Are they unhealthy? How do you know one way or the other? We'll cover that in full in a moment, and it's probably not the answer you'd expect. But first, you must understand how both good and bad habits come to be. How habits are created. In The Power of Habit, Charles Duhigg calls the process of a habit the three-step loop, and it looks like this. Step one, the cue or trigger is what initially gives your brain the signal to perform something automatically. The cue or trigger always precedes the habit. Step two, the habit is the triggered routine. It can be physical, mental, or emotional. And step three, the reward is what comes right after doing the habit or routine, and it gives your brain the message that typically feels good. The reason Charles calls this a loop is because each step feeds into the next, and with most habits, it just keeps going. Once it starts and your brain recognizes it as being pleasurable or beneficial, it becomes automatic. How to see your habits. Undeniable proof you're in the loop. Think of something you've been doing your whole life, seemingly on autopilot. Brushing your teeth in the morning comes to mind for me. This habit of toothbrushing is so ingrained that you don't have to think consciously about it something triggers you to begin the process of brushing your teeth. It could be waking up, finishing a meal, or preparing for bed. Upon finishing, you get not only a clean taste in your mouth, but a feeling of cleanliness. A feeling that has kept you brushing your teeth for years, but only exists because of the advertising world. In The Power of Habit, Duhigg references a man named Claude Hopkins. His job was to sell more Pepsodent brand toothpaste. To make sure this happened, he sold the idea of tingles and a minty taste as a result of your brushing habit. Look, he understood the tingles and minty flavor were not necessary for dental health, but it was the actual brushing that was so important. 
But first, he had to find a way for people to associate a particular feeling or signal that it was working and repeat the process on a regular basis and then therefore keep buying Pepsodent whenever they ran out. The sensation from the minty flavor did the trick. People craved the tingles and as a result, believed their teeth were clean. The loop was then created. Habits were formed. Pearly whites everywhere. Claude Hopkins engineered a habit for thousands upon thousands of Americans and millions more shortly thereafter by feeding into the three-step loop. Step one, first the cue. Wake up or get ready for bed. Step two, the habit or routine. Brush teeth. And step three, the reward. Feel the tingles, which means a fresh, clean mouth. This same habit loop can be used to create positive habits in your life, which can help you maybe lose body fat or build muscle, and most importantly, maintain your results. But you must know how to implement the process. Are your habits healthy? Most of the time when you hear or read something about improving your health, it revolves around a good intention. Something like the notion of eating better, exercising more, de-stressing your life, going to the doctor, starting a meditation practice, or even the suggestion to smell an orange because some obscure research suggests it lowers your stress levels. The problem with this advice is the lack of context and the insistence that said advice is right for everyone. It's an authoritarian viewpoint, and since some health ideas are seemingly so set in stone, doing anything else is deemed unhealthy. What's worse is most of the advice is rarely practical, and if it is, there's no instruction or implementation. When we try to define healthy, there's no simple definition. Most would say to live a life of moderation, but as human beings, that's not in the cards for many of us. And if you're training intensely, focusing on your nutrition, working a lot, and living your life, the word moderation may not be in your vocabulary. However, one's view of a moderate life could be extreme to another. It's all about perspective. A quick example of someone who trains six days per week. To an outsider, Someone who's not physically active, let's say, this might be seen as obsessive or extreme. But to the heavily trained individual, it's normal because of their history with physical culture. Before we can define our habits as healthy, we have to first figure out where we stand in our quest for good health. Then we have to look at our history. What does good health mean? What does the life of a person with good health habits look like? How do they act? What do they eat? How do they live? The problem with bad habits. Bad habits can rule us like no other, and we might not even be aware of it. I get emails every single day from men and women telling me they can't control their eating habits. They refer to themselves as lazy. That's why they're not in shape, and they haven't reached their fitness goals. One lady wrote to me and said she eats healthy during the week, but blows her diet over the weekend because of uncontrollable binges. She feels deprived because of healthy eating during the week Now she can't control her cravings over the weekend. I had a man write to me saying that he used to go to the gym four days per week in the morning, but he got into a bad habit of staying up late playing video games. And now he sleeps in, hitting snooze over and over until it's time to go to work. Bad habits are often hard to break because they give us short-term pleasure and because we crave routine. It's a battle of instant gratification and the long-term reward of discipline. Humans are creatures of habit. And even if something causes us to break down or make us sick, we have a hard time changing because we are desperate for familiarity. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled The Problem with So-Called Health Habits by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. And thank you to BetterHelp. BetterHelp Online Counseling offers you a convenient, safe, and private online setting to get help. Their licensed counselors specialize in areas like stress, relationships, anxiety, and more. You can schedule sessions at your own time and pace. Four communication modes, including text, chat, video, and phone, allow you to communicate with your counselor in the way you like best. Plus, you can request a new counselor at no additional charge if you're not totally happy. BetterHelp is available worldwide with a network of 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists. Get started communicating with your therapist in less than 24 hours. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Optimal Health Daily listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code OHD. So why not get started today? 
Go to betterhelp.com slash OHD. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash OHD. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. It was so difficult for me to not smile when reading this post. That's because I'm a huge fan of the book to which JC was referring, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Now, a quick disclaimer. I have no financial interest in this book. I'm just a fan. I have a long commute to work, or at least I did before this whole coronavirus thing, and I would quickly go through Audible books, and one of those happened to be the aforementioned The Power of Habit. Now, usually, when I'm finished with an audiobook, I remove it from my phone to save space. But once in a while, I keep a book downloaded in my phone because I know that I will end up listening to it again, and The Power of Habit is one of those. But here's the thing. It's not enough to read these books and go, okay, that was interesting, moving on. Knowledge alone isn't power. Action is true power. It's kind of like listening to this podcast. You're getting lots of knowledge for sure, but are you implementing any of the things we talk about? If you are, then you are well on your way to becoming your most powerful self. If not, well, you have the knowledge or the saved up power. Now it's time to use it. All right, that'll do it from me for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post, so I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.